the third book in the Dark is Rising sequence. Hello fellow bookquesters, it is I, Aaron the Bookquester, and today I got this great book to introduce to you all, Green Witch, the third book in the Dark is Rising sequence, and well, let's get right on to it. So, if you remember from book one, Under Sea, Under Stone, Simon, Jane, and Barnabas Drew are the ones who found a chalice in an underwater cave, and they had their adventures in Cornwall. If you remember from the previous book, The Dark Age Rising, the book 2 in the sequence, Will was a normal boy until his 11th birthday, to which he wakes up to find himself an old one, an ancient being of the light who is there to fight the wrath of the dark. And he has quite a lot of power, and he is one, and he can use all sorts of magic. And finally, these two pivotal characters from the past two books meet, where it all began, in Cornwall. The chalice that Simon, Jane, and Barnabas had recovered had been stolen from the museum that they had given it to. And they have been looking for the chalice. And, and uh, Uncle Merriman, or as we know him, Merlin, he comes along and one of, as well as the, the old ones, and takes Simon, Jane, and Barnabas back to Cornwall to, in order to recover the chalice. Meanwhile, he also brings Will, who he tells that him not to reveal his identity of being an old one to Simon, Jane, and Barnabas. So to the fact that Will just seemed like an ordinary and, to be honest, sometimes quite annoying boy. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Jane witnesses the Green Witch being made. The Green Witch is they make, they make a sort of green figure out of Rowan. And the Green Witch is given power by Tethys, the apparent Lord of the Sea. And, and the Green Witch is made out of wild magic. However, it seems that the Green Witch seems to possess some sort of item that the Dark Ones want. What would that item be? Something that was lost in the sea in the first book, perhaps? If you can remember that big problem. Meanwhile, Meanwhile, the evil one, the dark one, has, he takes he takes Barnabas and Simon, and manages to make Barnabas with a special, almost very special ability, to look into the chalice and see the future. And Barnabas, well, he sees the future, and with it, he tells a way for the dark one to manage to some somewhat command the Green Witch. To come forth to him. And things aren't looking too good. What will occur? What is it that the Green Witch is managing to hide? And what is revealed at the end of the book that I deem so important? Well, I'll reveal one thing. The, what is revealed at the end of the book? Well, it allows them to read the chalice. And the secret of the chalice is quite astonishing. It is, the it is the second part of the poem that is introduced in the second book. On the day of the dead, when the year to die, must the youngest open the oldest hands. Through the door of the birds where the breeze breaks, their fire shall fly from a raven boy. And the silver eyes that see the wind, and the light shall have the harp of gold. By the pleasant lake the sleepers lie, on Cadfan's way where the kestrels call, through grim from the great king's shadows fall, yet singing the gold harp shall guide, to break their sleep and bid them rise. When light from the lost land shall return, six sleepers shall rise, six shines shall burn, and where the midsummer tree grows tall, by Pendragon's sword the dark shall fall. And that, my friends, is the end of the prophecy that we have been waiting for. And well, it does do quite a lot of foreshadowing, doesn't it? Because I know the next two books will be The Great King and I believe The Silver Tree. And well, there are many, many mentions of, well, these, this Great King and a Golden Harp, which I believe is one of the artifacts that is mentioned in book two. And Pendragon, well, Pendragon, my friends, is the name or the title of King Arthur himself. 
how he will reveal himself in the next part of the story, I have no idea. Maybe it won't be King Arthur at all. I wonder if Excalibur will make an appearance, but, well, I am waiting for the next book, so I don't really know. And with that, I have gotta say, like, it's starting to come together, you know? In book one, they introduced the Druze and the first artifact. In book two, they introduced, we introduced to Will Stanton, one of the most pivotal characters so far, and the final old one, who finds the six signs, which is another one, you know, of the great artifacts of, ma of magic. And now we're here at Greenwich, and we can finally read the chalice and know what's next in the river. And it does say in the prophecy something about six sleepers shall ride, six signs shall burn. So maybe these sleepers are some sort of artifacts or something of the sort. Although I do say that I don't think there was any sleepers mentioned. I, I heard a crystal sword, the six signs, the chalice. Um, the golden harp from the magical artifacts, but I don't think I've heard of sleepers, so I wonder what those are. And well, with that, I gotta say, one of the best planned fantasy series of all time, rivaling many, many, many of the greatest fantasy books I've ever read, including the Percy Jackson and Harry Potter series, and I really, really enjoyed this book, and like always, your book quester, Aaron the Book Quester, would highly recommend, and well, I mean, imagine if Imagine if you're part of some prophecy like this, what would you do? Honestly, I would panic and hide under my bed. Not, not the most pleasant thing in the world, is it?